So um, before we go to q and A, I I do want to ask you um, about one um, quote in your book. Let me quote from one area and ask you why you included this, what the message is. Uh, when troubles arise among faraway people, re we remain tempted to hide behind the principle of national sovereignty, to mind our own business when it is convenient, and to think of democracy as a suit to be worn in fine weather, but left in the closet when clouds threaten. Why did you include that um, message? Um, and, and just enlarge a little bit and, and tell us about your perspective um, for some of the challenges we've, we're facing today. I mean, you began to do that um, in, the, in the last question, but enlarge on well, that I a little. Well, I think this whole concept of responsibility to protect, right. the hardest part about it is the issue of national sovereignty. Um, the issue is, you know, do you interfere in the internal affairs of another country? Um, and the sense is that if people are doing terrible things, leaders to their own people, then there is that responsibility. There has also been kind of an extension of it if there is a massive natural disaster and um, like the in international Pakistan. community right. offers, for instance, Burma, when they had the cyclone there and the leadership at that time didn't want any help and meanwhile the people were dying. And I, and I often say to my students this because I think it shows how complicated the concept is. I happen to believe that um, not enough was done to help New Orleans after Katrina. Sure. There were people living, uh, I, I was down there two years after uh, Katrina and there were still refrigerators in the trees and bottom line is that there were people living under bridges, all kinds of things, and one could make the argument that the government didn't do enough to help. So how would we have felt if all of a sudden the Chinese had said, we're here to help you? So the bottom line is it's a more complicated concept right. than, than meets the eye in terms of interference. And the United States, we are the most protective of national sovereignty. We have not even allowed automaticity with the international court of justice and right. various ways that we looked at the United Nations Charter was that we isolated certain areas for ourselves. So national sovereignty, I think, really does become an issue. Then there is the question about democracy. I happen to believe that we're all the same and people everywhere want to make decisions about their own lives. I am chairman of the board of an organization called the National Democratic Institute, right. which was started actually under the Endowment for Democracy, a program that President Ronald Reagan had set up. And there's a Republican Institute and a Democratic Institute and business and labor. And what we do is go and teach about the nuts and bolts of democracy. So then there are people who say, well, X group of people are not ready for democracy besides you know, how it's long and complicated. The bottom line is we are now faced with what's happening in the Arab world. And um, I've had some very interesting discussions about this. And I was having, I was in a uh, panel, in just a discussion like this with an Arab. And I said, this was in December, and I said, well, we can't call it the Arab Spring anymore because it's the winter. So I'm calling it the Arab Awakening. And he got okay. really mad at me. And he said, you can't call it that because that makes it sound like the Arabs have been asleep all this time. <laughs> uh, and I said, so what would you call it? And he said, Arab troubles. And I said, well, what about Arab opportunities? So in those four sentences, sure. you can see a different approach. I think that what is happening in the Arab world is as big a watershed as anything that we've seen, the end of the Cold War, and it's a long story. Um, I don't think that the media did us any favors by covering it as if it were a spectator sport um, that was of short duration. And it is people trying to figure out how they can play a role in their own government. And so I believe in de democracy is not an event. Democracy is a process. And mm -hmm. it goes through many ups and downs. Um, and sometimes the wrong people get elected. It happens in this country. And and you have another election. Um, right. And so the bottom line is, is right. that um, you can't just put democracy on as if it's uh, just a suit of clothes. And so I think we have to understand the process and give it time and 
and be supportive of it. I'm finding it very difficult to listen to people who say, oh my God, Islamists have just gotten elected. The bottom line is, in Islamic countries, it is Who more than elected. likely yeah. that a uh, Muslim is going to get elected. Yeah. Um, and so we can't just lump everybody together. They right. are, to get back to religion, they are not uh, monolithic. Every religion that I've been uh, <laughs> uh, uh, has extremists in right. it of some kind. Fundamentalists. So I, yeah. I think that uh, one has to, to be careful. And then the lesson that my father, he, we came to the United States in 1948, and he spent his life writing about the fragility of democracy and the responsibilities of citizens to be educated to support it. And he wrote several books he on did, this. Yes, yes. yes.